Hello and welcome to an intro to MacroQuest. So I felt like I didn't go too far into the macro quest setup and how to create characters in my previous videos so I kind of wanted to expand on that mostly because I'm creating another team and I wanted to make sure that it was clear because I have been getting a few questions on this so uh, I, I'm assuming you've watched my other videos uh, setting up EQ emu on uh, Linux and Windows 10 either one uh, they kind of cover the exact same stuff uh, so what we're gonna do so step one is really you need to know the names of the characters you want to create first uh, this makes it a whole lot easier and uh, I have uh, a spreadsheet of all the characters I've made so far and the characters I am going to make and this is the group right here I'm going to make uh, a Th Iskar warrior uh, Necromancer, Monk, uh, Wood Elf, Druid, High Elf, Cleric, and a Wood Elf Bard. Uh, I just unlocked uh, Kunark not too long ago, and I've leveled all my other characters to 60. And now I'm looking to add some more, uh, some more damage and just more, uh, more, more all around group to the uh, ensemble. So these are the names that I'm gonna use. Uh, let's go ahead and move this right there. So step one is update these start bats. So these start bats come with, uh, when you download MacroQuest in the other video, you'll find a folder called Cremo Utilities. And these launch uh, clients, uh, whatever, they have the, pretty much the basis of what I'm using for... Uh, for creating this so what you're gonna do is you're uh, gonna copy the line so I've already uh, are, I've already done it but it's just pretty much a Windows uh, Windows command to start a client with uh, and name it uh, the name of the character and then it starts it from the very specific uh, folder and whatnot and you'll need to assign the account names also so so, so I've I've signed everything here like account names so like hammock j37 goes to that character and hammock j42 goes to that character so you just got to make sure those all line up so you know where your characters are <laughs> and that comes uh, comes a little bit more important later on uh, I have my characters split into two separate directories, one for bots and one for main characters. And the main characters have a little bit better graphic settings and uh, sound. <laughs> the bots do not have that. They have lower uh, graphics, they have no sound, and uh, I think a few other things are turned off. I, I can't remember, but it's two separate directories for those. So you'll you'll need to pretty much c copy uh, copy this launch client, edit it to your to your uh, your settings. So it's pretty much the same file. Uh, you just update the account names. You do a uh, all the folders, however they are on your system, and then uh, just update the name here and the name here. It's in two places. So Thule, Thule, and that will update that. And in my case, I have a, for each group, I do like a, a, a full bat file. So if I just want to play six characters, whatnot. And then for this particular group, I've added all my power level characters, quote unquote. So that's all my clerics, my bards and uh, my enchanter and shamans so I can buff the characters up make sure that they have no chance of dying uh, and my druid right there so they have thorns and stuff I think mage have a uh, better damage shield but it's always it's always causes issues with me when the mage uh, gets accidentally attacked and the pet kills everything so I always go with the druid all right so you need to you know update your bat file and that'll give you 
be able to start your characters. Uh, I also have one for all my characters. So I have a bat file, all my characters listed in it, and it just goes one by one, updates them all. And then uh, this is something I'm testing out. This will change the processor affinity so that it will distribute the processes evenly across all the processors. Uh, it should work in this script. If not, I have another script, which was in the Cremo utilities. This one, EQ, EQ FN, and I've updated here for uh, my processor, which you can see here is the uh, formula on how to generate that. I have a uh, Ryzen uh, 3950, so I have quite a few cores to distribute everything across. So it's at the next step up from there, which is the 65,000. All right, so, and let's see here, where were we? All right, pick the classes, create the group files, update the start all files. Next, you're going to want to go into the MQ2 auto login file, and you're going to want to update that. So you're going to find that in your macro quest directory. So if you minimize all of these, so this is directly in uh, the macro quest directory. So it's E uh, or whatever your whatever your uh, thing is, but it's right here. Uh, and it's the auto login.ini. And my super safe password of one, two, three, four, five, six, since it's all local. What you're going to want to do is make sure your characters are here for one. You need to uh, set up this, the server, uh, whatever your server name is, short name, and then your short server's uh, full name. So it'll auto pick it in the login screen. And then you'll put your account name, and then you'll put your, your password uh, if you're running on a real server. Uh, that's that's up to you, but since I host everything myself, I'm not worried. Uh, so you set the password and you set the character name. That's very important. So we went down. I didn't. I've already set it up, but pretty much, there's Thule. Yeah. So he is 37, which ties back to this right here. MHJ 37, 38, 39, through 42. So you just make sure those are all set up and all the names match. This is important for it to auto log in the character. Uh, and if the character is not created, in our case, it'll just wait until we create the character to log in. And then there we go. I think we can go ahead and launch. it. So let's go ahead and kick this off. Let's see what happens. I think I have everything set up. And uh, I already have Mac requests running, otherwise it would have kicked up a uh, uh, administrative prompt. So uh, first character is going to load is my G, uh, GM character. And then, all right, through the magic of editing, we already have everybody loaded up. I should have taken all these guys out. It looks like it did not start the command server. So let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and start that real quick. Why did it not start it in the first place? Ah, uh, it's commented out. That's why. And it does not look like it started the GM character either. So what we'll do. This is one neat thing. So all this, uh, all these uh, task lists and stuff, they check to make sure the client is that not already running. So we can let's go ahead and minimize all these. So we can run the command again, and it's only going to load uh, what was missing. So we get the command server. Let's go ahead and pop that up here, and then. Uh, Let's actually, let's kill that. Yeah, there we go. Before it starts loading up these characters that don't exist yet. All right, let's close this one because it failed. All right, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and create our first character. So we want a Iskar. Let's go with male. Let's name him Thule, 
and we want a warrior we do not want to do the tutorial and we'll start in catalyst catalyst uh let's do appearance let's give him uh i like the green eyed there we go and advanced so let's see here we have we have the agility strength gets maxed out dexterity will get maxed out all right that should be fine we'll just go with the default um by the time we get to velos every every stat pretty much is maxed out so it doesn't really matter too much that is a warrior so let's go ahead and enter the world all right what were we making here? here let's get our spreadsheet let's move it right here we are making a necromancer all right iskar necromancer we're naming him death and we're gonna go with necromancer start in kazakh uh let's go with red eyes red eyes is fine what's cool about everquest is you can actually change your appearance from the character screen inside the game without uh having to pay money which is really nice uh let's see here and that's on retail too uh let's see advanced that looks fine we'll start with that let's go ahead and create him all right solo another iskar yeah we have not created any uh iskars until now since we are in the uh kunark expansion my uh pseudo progression that i'm doing uh brown eyes let's go with blue eyes yeah in advance so we have all right i feel like agility is a waste i'm gonna put that in stamina it's probably a waste too but it'll help him early on at least through kunark the stats in kunark don't get really ramp up until late velos and then buckland all right so we're good to go for him let's go ahead and get him end game and what do we got della della was a wood elf druid all right druid or wood elf elf let's go with girl uh let's see tutorial off druid tunar greater fate arc uh, face. Let's go with the blonde. That sounds good. Everything looks good. Advanced. Stamina and wisdom. That should be fine. Go ahead and enter the world. Yeah, why didn't you enter the world? Go. All right. Uh, let's see here. Lydia. Do, do, do. High Elf Cleric. All right, create character. All right, tutorial off. Cleric on. I don't like that face. There, let's go with that face. And I don't know, statistically, I found that High Elves are the best clerics uh through my, all my research but i don't think it really matters it only matters in the first few expansions uh stamina and wisdom should be fine uh but i i think dwarf actually is statistically better starting but i have gotten i've killed uh there's a dragon you can fight in the uh, temple of venetia of uh, volak and he drops a robe, and that robe is usable by clerics, and it's usable by uh, normal casters. And I had gotten to the point where the robe started to drop. <laughs> I mean, to not drop, but to rot, because I had no one who could wear it. Because I, uh, in the run I did, I did uh, 
druids instead of wizards and I did dwarves instead of uh, high elves and I think I had two mages and that's about it caster wise and I just had these robes rotting so now I use uh, high elves so they can wear the robes that drop for clerics or casters all right, Tunar, tutorial off, advanced, that looks good. Let's go ahead and create that. All right, so he's in Thul. Oh, he got started up again. All right, quit. Not sure what happened there. All right, what was this last one? Sapphire, what else bard? I named all my bards after uh, gemstones, just so I have an easy way to name them. So I have, uh, is it? Oh, the first one's Emma, because I like that name. But uh, from there on, it was uh, Amber, Star, Ruby, Diamond, Jade, Sapphire. The next one, the next one's gonna be Emerald and Pearl. So I thought that was kind of a Interesting way to do it. Uh, let's see. Agnostic is great. Charisma is go. I use uh, bards to sell things, so I always let their charisma go up. I do not do any charming or uh, mezzing because the scripts don't work for that, but it works perfect for selling to max out your charisma because money is actually very important. All right, we're good there. Tutorials off. Enter world. All right, we need this window to go away. Close window. Perfect. And he is in game. Okay. All right, so now all the characters are created. They all auto auto log in. Whatever. So let's get their newbie stuff done. Who is this guy? Vagon? Is that who I didn't listen to? Let's get their newbie, uh... Whatever. And then... So we are going to do a little cheese here in a second. To get them all together for uh, the next part. But... Yeah, in uh, normal progression servers, you don't spawn right in front of your uh, guild master. Just on uh, the newer ones. So the druid guild master is this dude. And then uh, the cleric one is that guy. And you get your little newbie tunic. You get some starter spells. Uh, let's see here. Tattered note. Who goes to what is this? The bard? She's the bard guild master. Yeah. Now something on this server alone that I've noticed is that bards have zero mana at level one, which causes the macro quest to constantly make them sit. So here, let's get him going up there. All right, let's go over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just summon. So this is a GM command. You can do summon and then the character name, like so. This is a very uh, useful command. Uh, summon. Solo. And I mean, you could run to the QOK books, but for demonstration purposes, this works fine. All right, so everybody's here now. So let's go ahead and invite, let's get him like, like this. Let's invite everybody to the same group. Let's get him over there. Just move them all to the edges. Uh, like this. 
there we go. And Sapphire. Let's just make her stand up. So to fix that mana issue, I can just give mana with the GM command, and then she gets her full mana, and the problem goes away, and she doesn't constantly try to sit. So that is one thing that might have to happen. Uh, let's see, invite, 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 invite. And the Mac request will auto join you, so that's pretty nice. One thing I recommend is to create a guild. If you uh, are starting fresh, create a guild, get your characters in the guild, because being able to do this and see all your characters and where they are and what their stuff is is so much more convenient than anything you could possibly know. All right, so we have everybody here. Uh, since this character already existed as a different character, he got a UI. So did this one. Uh, they all got the UI. Ah, uh, that's lame. Oh, this one didn't. Okay, this is perfect. So, I was going to show off a few of the basic commands real quick. So, let's move that down there so we can see. So, the follow command is uh, forward slash follow on. That makes everybody in the group, well, actually, every bot that's connected to the uh, to the server, which is uh, this, will follow you. So you can walk around, and they will follow. You can do follow off, and then they stop following. They just stay wherever they were. Uh, you can also do assist me, and then... All of the bots connected will assist you. So there's that. Uh, let's see. Where did my code go? There we go. So follow. Those are the two basic, really. I mean, you can get very far with just that. And so. But this is more the advanced. Every single option is a clicky that I kind of... I go with and so you can here's the assist me and you can do a forward slash only and then a piped group so only the people that are in your current group will assist you and you can do some pretty interesting things with that like uh, I have this one assist me only Saru includes Stacy which is a druids for snare so only Saru would assist me and then I can tell Saru directly to tell him to tell his group to assist him so I, you can do some pretty interesting things and this is my GM character so if I'm if I want to level up three groups at once I just set up these macros and I kind of pull pull from this guy and just let them attack everything and stuff like that just to kind of save time when you uh, when you're trying to level up so many characters you can have three groups going at once and just have them assist from playing one character that's kind of Kind of what I do sometimes when I don't want to pull. Uh, let's see, what is a, another good command? You can do a follow, and you can do the same forward slash only group, which will uh, only have the group follow you. So if I do follow group, let's go over here. I got all the other bots over on this side. And See, these guys run so slow because they don't have any uh, buffs yet. They're like, great. So if I do f follow me. Should, oh, they're not connected to the server, that's why. Um, um, what is an easy way to do that? Where is he? Yeah. Um... BC, uh, BCS connect, BC connect, ah, there it is, BCCM connect, there we go, I just gotta do that on the, well, for demonstration purposes, so if I do follow on, Notice how Yurge started following me. So if I do follow off, none of them is following me. But if I do follow group, 
yard will stay there. So, pretty useful command if you've got a lot of characters going on. Uh, let's see here. There is the uh, mana commands, so you can do forward slash mana. And then everybody will report their current mana if they're not full mana. If they're full mana, they will, uh, they will report nothing. And then you can also do the forward slash only, and then you can do the class abbreviation. So if you only want to see cleric mana, cleric is currently at 92 mana, or 92%, I guess. Uh, let's see what else. So this becomes very useful later on. Uh, so using the command server, so this is the BC, AA means send it to all attached, and then forward slash Mac. E3. So that'll reload the E3 macro, which is the kind of whole system that runs the whole whole shebang here. And I'll show more of that here in a second. Uh, let's see here. You can do a move to me command, only tanks. Uh, or that's another thing. You can do only tanks, I think only healers or something like that also. Uh, but move to me, so it's follow off so I can do a move to me and they'll move to wherever I was when I issued that command so if I want to position the characters around they'll do that wherever I was when they got the command I guess uh, let's see here I have a group macro just to invite people uh, this is from when he was a different character uh, let's see here raid commands um, turning mez on, so you can do mez on, so mezzing is enabled, mez off, mezzing is disabled. So if you have mez configured in the character scripts, which we'll look at here in a second, that'll work. And it goes on and on for all these different things. You can do, uh, there's a med on, so when you run out of mana and you want to force everybody to meditate, you can do med on and then slash not tanks and uh, not melee. So uh, the melee will use their stamina to do certain abilities, and they will it'll cause them to require to to med, whereas uh, healers and cast other casters use mana. So you can void your DPS; they don't need to sit, and you can just have everybody else sit. Uh, so this is everybody will med. Uh, then this turns it off, so they stop sitting. You can enable point oh point blank area of effect spells on and off so wizards druids and clerics they get a spell that uh, emanates from them doing damage so if you want to pull a bunch of mobs turn this on the wizards and stuff will use that and cast the spells that you have configured for that and then you can turn deb debuffs on and off so if you have a character that snares or uh, slows, you can turn those off or on by default. Uh, let's see, There's, I have a lot of commands here. <laughs> uh, let's see, hide corpse, that just hides and shows corpse, basic command. Uh, oh, burns, so there's a, uh, you can configure these quick burns, long burns, and uh, full burns. These are commands set up by uh, uh, macro quest. I'll show this. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we get into here. So in macro quest I and I, if you go down here right about aliases, I guess, line 80 ish, you start seeing all these different commands. And these are all the pretty much the macros that I'm using. So this is what the follow on does it sends a BC command to that server. And then uh, it sends to the uh, to follow and then the clean name. So it kind of just tells everybody to follow such and such. And they got all the different all the different commands. There's so many commands in here. Uh, you can do a forward slash yes to click yes if there's a pop-up. You can do a click it. Click it's kind of cool. I uh, didn't show that here. Let's do follow. So, uh, yeah, it just warns me that... Uh, Spirit is way over there, and he's not going to... Oh, <laughs> there he comes. All right, I guess he's going to 
He's gonna follow us. That's funny. So for click it, there's like certain objects in this game that you have to click to do things. Uh, like all, and this is the plane of knowledge. So to get, it's like a hub of getting to place. That's why I like to use it. So I want to go to, uh, what is this, Grob? So I want to go to Grob, which is the troll capital. So I just bring all my characters over here and I click the click it macro. And everybody will click on the stone. Uh, I believe it's configured in one of the macro quest configs, so what they're actually clicking on. But everybody click through, and we'll click back. And go back to uh, the plane of knowledge. And in the, the Planes of Power expansion, they added all these books to all the different zones, so you can easily get back here. So it's pretty cool, but that's a very useful command for easily clicking all that. There's also the run-through zone. Uh, EverQuest has a lot of zone lines, so it's like uh, just the invisible line. You cross the line and uh, you zone to the next zone. But uh, when you have the follow on like this, the, you, you'll go through, but everybody else will stop because they don't know that you went through a zone line. So if you stop right at the zone line, you click run through zone, they'll all start running in the way you're, the, the direction that you're facing to run through the zone line. And then you will follow them automatically. Uh, let's see here, slash gate. And there's there's tons of commands. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the same group. I've 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 tried these group commands before, but they've never really worked for me the way that I like. So I just set up macros in game for everybody. Uh, you can do buff me commands, so you can tell it to buff a certain character with uh, the configuration. So. Let's get into the macros for the bot INI. So let's pull up. Let's pull up Thule. Where's he at? All right. So Thule is a warrior. So he is very basic in his uh, abilities. So let's look here. So melee abilities for Thule. What does he have at level one? Looks like he has kick and bash. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure kick, and we're gonna configure bash. He can only do one of these, and to bash he has to have a shield. So we're gonna put kick first. Later on, warriors will typically use a shield, but uh, right now not. So we'll just go ahead and configure that now. Uh, he has no buffs. He has no aura right now, and. Uh, he has no burns. So let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back in here. Let's type Mac E3. That will reload that script for him. So he's good to go. No errors. All right, so let's look at death. What does death have? Let's go ahead and scribe his spells. Siphon strength and life tap. So death. Death is a necromancer. So his different spells. So you would think life tap is a nuke, but is actually a special life tap uh, section for uh, necromancers. So we can do just type in life tap here. Uh, so yeah, that's gem. We'll put it in gem one, and then we need to do. I think it's heal PCT. Uh, hold on, let me check on. Either Necromancer. Yeah, here it is. Heal, PCT, and then the percent. So let's just do 75%. So when my health gets to 75%, the Necromancer will automatically cast Life Tap. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So he has a debuff, which is uh, Siphon, Siphon Strength, I think it was. All right, we'll save that. We'll put that in gem two. So these uh, specifying the gem. So gem one is the first gem. Gem two is the second gem. Is very helpful for uh, 
if you have none of the spells memorized, it'll auto put it'll put the spell in that gym when it uses it. So it kind of prevents it by default. It use the last gym, and uh, that can be problematic at times because it'll just load a gym, load a spell, cast it, load a spell, cast it, or it'll sometimes get into a loop where it doesn't do anything at all because it's just constantly taking the and killing them. So if you save it in main, every time you load the script, it'll auto read, uh, load this spell set called main. That's uh, configurable inside the config settings. So let's do a Mac E3. And it looks like, oh yeah, perfect. So you can see right here, we spelled siphon strength wrong. So we get a warning telling us that we we did it wrong. So what did we do? S I P H O N. Oh, I did two P's. So correct that. Go back to death. Back E3. There we go. He is configured now. Now solo is a monk. Monks have mend, kick. Yeah, mend and kick at level one. So let's go here. So low, and we go here. I like to just spread these out so I can, they're a lot more readable. So let's do kick. And then life support is mend, heal percent. Uh, let's say 75%. That should work. So let's go ahead and reload him. Mac E3. And we can see over here, nothing went wrong. So that should be fine. All right, so we are on, wow, she has a weird UI. Oh, this is the default UI, that's why. Uh, I don't ever use the default, I always load in, but this is, works perfect. All right, skin like wood and minor healing. So let's go ahead and put minor healing in the first slot. Uh, let's go up here to Della and let's do skin like wood. So this will show us buffing, uh, which is pretty good. Let's do, uh, what's his name? Thule. So bot buff. Bot buff means it'll buff that particular bot with a buff. Pretty simple. Uh, group buff is really for the. There's these uh, the same version of these that you can get, but it casts on the whole group. So you kind of just want to configure it once, and then when you issue the buff command, it'll go through and call all those on all the characters with those. So we just want to get skin like wood on all uh, six characters. So dual death. Uh, solo, Della, uh, Sapphire, I forgot Lydia. Now, self buff is a buff that you'll cast on yourself when you first log in. Skin like wood, cast that on ourselves. So let's go here. Let's put skin like wood right there. We save uh, his civil set. Yes, we did. Okay. So, let's go in here. All right, let's save her spell set to main. And we did his skin like wood. All right. Mac E3. All right. So now, this, notice she started casting skin like wood. Uh, she cast it on herself first. Now she's going to cast it on, gets it next. Who gets it next? <laughs> does she not have enough mana? No, she does. Let's see what, what we didn't do. 
Uh, did I type that wrong? No, that's right. Skin like wood, skin like wood on all of them. Interesting. I have noticed, um, this happens with uh, the cleric level one spell, is that the duration is too short for macro quest to do anything with it. I, I tried editing it in uh, one of my, one of the uh, spell files, but I ended up breaking a lot of things. But like courage itself, the level one courage will not work as a uh, a bot buff for some reason. I think there's some kind of duration issue. I think it has to last over like 30 minutes or something like that. And I think these level one spells don't last that long. I thought I put that in there. Come on. So. Come on. Save. Save that as main. All right, let's reload you just in case. Let's see what's going on here. Yeah, I think the duration is just too short that it's not going to cast on the other people at the moment. I don't know why, but that is just the way it works. All right, uh, let's see here. Yeah. So she has got... So we can set up heals real quick, so... All right, tank is Thule. Important buff bot is Lydia. Um, let's see, who else is important? I think only Lydia is important. Or this is from the point of view of the druid. So the tank we're going to use on the or the heal we're going to use on the tank is minor healing, and that is in gem one. And we're going to do a heal percent of let's say seventy five. Let's go ahead and copy that. And let's do 85. And then uh, 55 if somebody else is hurt. We're going to heal tanks, important bots, and everybody else. We're not going to bother with pets. It's not worth the effort. Uh, all of this can be left blank for now. We don't have any of these spells on the character at the moment. But this is where you'd put your, your nukes. These would be auto-casted. Dots on assist. So when you call for assist me, anything here in the main will be executed on the target. Dots on command. That is another command where you can tell it to issue these when you tell it to. I just do everything on assist. Uh, this is where you put the point blank AOE effect that you're going to have. And anything that you're going to do for burns. Any like uh, buffs that would make you uh, burn more. And then druids and wizards get evac. So you put a uh, lesser secure or lesser evac here at the beginning when you get those at like level 20 or so. And those will make you uh, zone out <laughs> as soon as you. It's like a quick teleport kind of spell. And it'll save the group from death. Okay, so we got her. Let's go ahead and reload her. Alright, and let's fire up Lydia. She already has her spells memorized. Uh, where is she? Right down here. So the tank is Thule. The important part this bot this time is Della. And the tank heal is going to be minor healing also. Uh, we'll do this at 55, 85. Uh, wait, they just have a different. We'll take off that. All this gets changed as you level. You have to update this every time you get new spells. You get spells like every four levels, I believe. At least in classic. 
ever quest you get every four levels. I think now it's a little bit more uh, spread out. Uh, let's see, courage won't work, so we don't get skip that. Go ahead and save her, and then Sapphire. Sapphire does not have any spells, I believe. Uh, let's see, forage, hide, nope. No combat abilities, and you do not start with any songs as a bard. Okay, perfect. So let's go ahead and reset. Let's reload everybody. Uh, this will probably include the other characters. I think they're all connected to the server at this point. Or not. Okay, everybody should be good to go. He's good. He's good. She's good. And perfect. So let's go ahead and buff him with skin like wood just because it's not auto casting for some reason. All right, let's go to a newbie area real quick and try to kill something. Uh, so I have a three Iskar and three good. Let's go to Crescent Reach just for demonstration purposes. Because I will not be slaughtered by guards while doing this. I got everybody? Nope. Come on, guys. A bit uh, derpy there, but we'll get over here. And uh, Crescent Reach is a zone that was added in a later expansion than what is available in the in the server but uh for some reason it is available you can't go beyond this one but it's uh it's here uh where did solo go oh he got stuck on the yeah when you don't have uh when you don't have spirit of wolf it's kind of kind of slow all right follow come on Go ahead and click it. For the longest time, this one wouldn't work for me, but uh, there was an update to one of the client files that resolved that issue. Oh, he's still <laughs> here. That's hilarious. Um, follow off. Let's leave him. Let's send him back up there. He'll just destroy everything in like one shot, so. All right. We just have our solo group. That's all that's in the zone. Just all six level ones. <laughs> Starting our adventure. All right. Move to me. Move to me will also cancel follow. So that's very convenient. If you want to just like move your characters to a certain spot while you pull. Um, I'd rather get, yeah, let's get the Spiderling. If I can get it to attack me. I don't know, this zone's very weird. I don't know, sometimes this stuff will attack, sometimes it won't. Let's see if we can get this, this uh, there we go. Oh, I clicked assist. There we go. Four. Now everybody will assist me. Hopefully. Move to me. Assist me. I should start cat. Oh. I didn't put life type as a nuke. But they are healing, as you can see. And they're doing their melee. I think, uh... Yeah, he debuffed the Siphon Strength right there. Alright, so while they're fighting, let's uh, switch Death. So that he does Life Tap constantly. For demonstration purposes, we'll go ahead and save that. We'll back E3 that. And where did he go? 
Oh, they're chasing him. Alright, so... Without Snare, you, uh... You have a lot of running mobs, so that's something to consider when you're building your group. That's why I like to do druids. Yeah, so he's doing that now. The two, the druid, and... Yeah, looks like the druid and the, uh... Cleric are healing us, so that's good. We got another add. Let's see if I can get that. It's hard to taunt at this level. Alright, the druid is out of mana. The cleric is out of mana. Thule is about to die, and he is down. Oh, he's back up. His regeneration is kicking in. We, we're just going to get destroyed here, though. Yeah. So. But that is, uh, I mean, I can't really recover from this right now. These mobs are... Let's see if I can... Yeah, he's got no mana. He's going to sit. Now let's uh, go to death. Just recover this real quick. All right. Let's go ahead and I there's GM command uh, pound kill. We'll just kill whatever they're fighting. Uh, yeah, there we go. So I can do uh, a summon pound summon on a corpse. It'll summon it, and then I can do a cast spell. 2738, which is a 100% uh, experience res. This is just going to be a constant cluster. Here, let's do this. Tar Thule. Summon. GM res. And then I can go on to the map. I can grab Solo. Summon him over here. Summon Death. Summon Lydia. Summon that. Our corpse. I think there's no more corpses. Oh. All those creatures are coming. Kill. There we go. Uh let's see Delia. She is the only corpse here. And we'll get her back up. But I think that kind of demonstrates, you know, how to create your first group and uh, configure them. And as you level up, you're gonna wanna go in here and you gotta update every single, every single time if you want least, you know, to stay accurate and stuff. Like, uh, where's Yurd? This is my, this is my warrior at level 60. Not much really in here. I have uh, an amulet of necropotence, which uh, is an instant cast turn me into a skeleton, which I use because he's an ogre. It just makes it easier to uh, stay small and not take up a lot of space, but it's pretty much bash, kick, and then B-rate is a uh, taunting move. Uh, I have like auto taunt on, smart taunt on, stuff like that. And let's look at a, uh, here's Venra. This is my main cleric. Uh, I, and these build up over time. Like, I have cures for every disease or poison, so I put this on every cleric, every shaman, every druid, and they will automatically cast pure blood and cure whatever the spell is. It's very uh, useful. Uh, just the, you know, cleric HP buff, cleric mana buff, just auto casting that stuff, and then, you know, just kind of configure that as you go you know you set your tanks you set your important bots uh i don't actually need all these anymore i was doing this weird thing with uh to get complete heal to work because uh if you if you don't specify everybody as being important and then uh you turn off healing all you'll heal the tank before they get to the 30 percent to do a complete heal but I've, 
I, don't know, I just did uh, the three dragons of Kunark to see if I could kill them. And I was having issues healing because ca the casting of complete heal takes 10 seconds. And the between the fears and everything, I could never get it cast off. So I was just losing tanks and stuff. It was kind of kind of humorous but uh now i just have it set up to uh cast the biggest biggest heal i got on the tank and then the important ones get the uh quick heal and uh, let's see what else uh and since they deemed 60 i'm using whatever spells are available i i was gonna try to i was looking on alakazam which is a uh kind of a wiki for spells I was trying to figure out which ones were just Kunark and which ones were just Velos and it was just turning into a, a lot of micromanaging I just so I just used whatever the best spell I have from buying them from the vendor and POK uh, so I get a little bit better spells but it really doesn't matter I mean it's like percentage small percentage better for like uh, like the wizards and stuff yeah, like uh, I'm using Ice Spear and Guardians, and it's like the difference between this one and the low one, one before it is really slow. I mean, really low difference. But you just configure them all. Uh, like this is a mask you get from Guck. I have turned on, it's a legacy drop. Turn on your familiar, they'll self cast that. Shield the Magi, they'll self cast that. Uh, and then I think rogues, they have the poison, so you just set the poison as a self buff. I uh, tell it the melee ability backstab and they'll go to town. Uh, bards are a little bit more complex. So bard, everything up top is pretty normal. Uh, then you set up these melodies, and these are what they twist. Uh, so I have an X melody elemental melody and a disease melody and i had a water one for when i was killing uh the water guy in kedge keep uh let's see here where is yurd and you can swap those by play melody water play melody disease play melody exp so you just do play melody whatever the name is right here exp and then the bard will twist the songs listed, so I think six is about as much as I can twist, but one of these is a two minute length. Most of these last 20 seconds, so five is really, I think, probably the max you can get without the uh, Luckland uh, AA spells. Uh, let's see here. What uh, didn't I cover? Uh, let's see here. Where is my intro? Let's see, I covered all that. I covered all that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that actually covers everything I was gonna cover for this video. If there's any other questions or comments, just let me know, and I can try to dig deeper into something to help uh help make it clear. But thank you for watching. And have a great day.